Hi, welcome back to ODE YouTube channel. Today I'm here to show you the pens that I received in December 2021. So, we are in the beginning of 2022. It is time to show you the pens that I received during the last month. There are not many pens, five pens. So I think this time I can make this video shorter just to show you the pens and later I will do the full review. So let's start with the first, with no particular order. And the first is this pen that doesn't stay like this. This is the Lamy Ideos or Lamy Ideos. And this pen is really, when you look at this pen, it looks like a Lamy pen. I don't think there is much doubt about it. Uh, it has this very flat clip, although it is kind of rounded at the top, that you can press here and the clip lifts, so it's very Lamy-esque pen. And the most interesting feature of the pen is the shape. It has a kind of uh, water drop shape, as you may see. And the clip is not where we would think it would be in the in this in this bottom in this top of the of the drop or on the largest part of the drop no it is on this side which kind of makes sense because it is a flatter side of the pen so it is an interesting pen made of metal i find it there is something that doesn't feel that much secure in this pen. I can't explain it uh, very well. I didn't ink it up yet, so I don't have any experience with it by now, but I will have it and I will uh, review it and talk about it. It has a section that reminds me of the Lamy Studio, but with this triangular shape, without being that more annoying triangular shape of the uh, let's say the Safari, and it has this nib that's not like the nib of the Safari, it is a nib like the nib on the uh, Ion. So, if I had to compare this pen with some other two, I would compare it with both the Lamy Studio and the Lamy Ion. So, the these pens, they, they, don't, they don't share the same kind of look. This one is very, um, very flush in everything and very straight. This one is more slender in both ends and a little larger here in the middle. And this one has kind of more a flat top shape with the cap being a little wider than the barrel, but almost uh, cylindrical, not completely, but almost cylindrical. When we uncap them, that's, that's where we can see some things that make sense. One is this. These two pens look a lot alike, but this one has a rounded section and this one has that tear drop section, which goes to a triangular grip. Uh, both have steel nibs, these Studio and the uh, Ideos, and they have different nibs, as you may see. This one has the nib that is more similar with the nib of the Ion. The section of the Ion is similar to the other two, but this section is girthier and it has a matte feel and it, it has the same color as the pen, so it's different in that way, but it has the same nib as the new Ideos pen. One thing that reminds me of this shape, not this, of this shape here, is somehow the shape of the clip of the studio, which is an interesting pen design-wise, but I need to see if I already reviewed this on the channel. If I didn't, uh, I will need to review it because this pen I, I guess I'm willing to sell it because I, I, it doesn't make me fall in love for it. So I don't think I will keep that pen in my collection. I have lots of Lamy pens and that's not the most 
uh, amazing one. So this is one the Lamy Ideos that I received from Apple Boom as a loan for review. Another pen that I received from Apple Boom is this pen. It is inked and it really feels nice on the on the end on the hand. It's a large girthy pen. It's not very very uh, very long, but it's long enough. It's not a short pen, and it is the Lamy Dialogue C C in white. So we have this nib. This one has no breather hole. This two tone gold nib. The other tone is kind of rose gold to match this rose gold roll stopper. And it is a, a pen without a clip. It, a, it is a, um, a pen without a cap with a retractable nib that works by rotating the barrel. The end has this very funny and organic shape. So I kind of like it. And uh, in a way, in a way, I, I, I'm, I'm sure that I'm exaggerating in this, but it reminds me that building in Barcelona the, uh, the let's call it the rooftop of uh, La Pedrera by Antoni Gaudi. Uh, that's what it reminds me of. So it has this retractable nib that has that closure thing that is also in uh, gold, uh, rose gold color. This pen is a cartridge converter pen as this one is. For comparison with these two pens, we have here the Lamy Dialogue 3 in matte black and I have also here the um, Pilot Thermo in green. So this is a pen that is interesting but it is shorter. I think it is of the same girth as the Lamy Dialogue. It is a little shorter. It is, I find it to be more balanced in the hand than this one and the clip on this one, it retracts a little bit when you put the nib out, it gets more flush, but it has a clip, that one doesn't have a clip and it has that roll stop and another difference it has is that this one has these kind of lines that will help you to know if the the pen is completely closed because these lines should align. This one doesn't have that kind of, of thing, but I feel this pen gives you a much better feel when you have that done. You, you twist it and you feel it's in the right place. When you're using this pen, I'm not sure if I twisted it enough and I sometimes it's better to check the lines there. The retractable nib is the same as in the other pen and it has the same kind of closure. This pen was also sent to me by Apple Boom so, uh, some months ago, so I, I've used it quite a lot. I will review this one, I will review this one and I'll make a comparison video between the two because I think it may be useful if you are trying to know more about this model or the other one or to choose between which you prefer. This is the Pilot Fermo, which has also a twist action retractable nib. The kind of closure is different. It has a, a door that is not in a ball shape and it has a much finer nib. The pen is thinner and this is also a, a cartridge converter pen, so it's really more classic than those. It has really a different design and this was a very good acquisition uh, last year. This is a pen that I got from an exchange with Waski Squirrel. I, he accepted two of my pens that I don't love that much and I got that pen that was kind of a grail pen to me. So quite happy about that. I want to show you another pen that I got from Apple Boom for review. This is not also for me and I'm not still sure if I like it that much or not. And this is the Pelican M200 uh, Golden Barrel. It is the special edition for last year and it has a lot of glitter in it and it also has inside the 
Inc., the Edelstein Inc. for 2021, which is the golden barrel, the same as the pen. So this one has lots of shimmer and not sure if the focusing is right, but I think you can see how much heavy on sheen this ink is and there is lots of particles there so I've used this pen a little bit and because of the infant uh, not because of the infant calendar but uh, after that I inked it and kind of inspired by the infant calendar by Diamine that has lots of uh, shimmering inks so this was a good uh, time to ink this pen and this is not focusing so you can see here, it has a pelican medium nib, it has this regular shape of pelican pens and it has lots of shimmer on the material itself. The material, the plastic, seems a little bit different from the usual plastic. It has white parts there and also the white uh, piston mechanism. The the section is transparent with that kind of glitter, not white. This pen, I would compare it with my older Pelican M200. In, uh, it is kind of a dark demonstrator in anthracite and I feel the plastics feel different in my hand. So I'm not 100% I'm not sure if I'm, I'm completely convinced on this pen, but in a way I think it's very unique and it is fun. And I also have here another pen that has a very, very different feel from the other two, which is the Pelican M805 in Demonstrator. And this is a beautiful transparent pen and this one has a gold nib that is much bigger than the nibs on the on the M200, as you may see here. But these are all fun pens and I really understand how these pens can be collectible and I want to make a video on collectible pens. I was thinking about making a video on affordable collectible pens and this one, although it's not really expensive, is not that affordable anymore. And that's something that I find strange, I think, it has a kind of strange price point. It is much more expensive than the, these anthracite colored Pelican M200 that I bought a few years ago. The next pen I want to show you is a pen that I got from Bennu for a review. And this, this, is, this was very nice from Bennu to send me this pen and allowing me to keep it. Sorry, I hit the camera and all this stuff. And uh, maybe this pen will be given away in the channel because it is really fun, but maybe too much fun to me because I kind of prefer things that are slightly more uh, simple. And so this is the Bennu Ambrosia Brown Orchid. And yes, you have flowers there on these. A cap band, kind of a cap band, that is not straight. As you can see, it has these edges that are the leaves of the flowers or the petals, and you have this gorgeous material that goes from kind of a, let me change the light a little bit. It's very hard to show all the glitter of this pen. It goes from this kind of transparent cognac color to a deep purple ink full of small glitter then to gold with large particles of green then it has the same cognac section it has a steel nib by Schmidt and then it has this beautiful material there so this is a Bennu pen and if I want to compare Bennu with the other pens the only ones that I have are these the which has some glitter, but you cannot compare this kind of glitter with a Bennu pen. And I also brought here to the table the other two Bennu pens that I have 
with number 5 Schmidt nibs. And one is this, this is the Bennu hexagon, the color of this one is F. It is a full-sized pen. This is a shorter pen, but as you can see, it is almost the same size of a Pelican 200, M200. And this is the Bennu Minima in Mystical Green which has the same kind of size. So if you like the size of the Minima, you may like the size of this one. They are very similar. When This one also has glitter, but a much more discreet one. But you can see some, I hope, some red glitter in the black resin. And let me just show them to you. Uncapped. And this is how they look like. They have kind of similar nibs, but now that I look at it, the nib on the... Hmm, interesting. The nib, I'm not sure, but the nib on this one looks uh, a narrower there. This one looks looks a little wider and this one even wider. So I'm, I was not aware of this, I'm not sure. Maybe I'll need to make some measurements to be sure. But it's interesting that all these nibs don't seem to be the same. So kind of interesting. And okay, I will review this pen and I think that I will then organize a giveaway if you want to get this pen, but that will be after I have the time to review it and I will announce it on the channel, of course. And the final pen that I received in December was this pen, which was the, my self-birthday Christmas gift. And this pen was a pen that I was looking for for a long time, but I didn't know it existed. I bought this pen from a store this was bought for, by myself from a store which in Spain, which is called Ink Traveler, that is a specialist in Japanese products, pens and stationery and inks. And that store uh, had this pen that I didn't know it existed. Okay, maybe it's shame on me, but it doesn't appear much in Europe. And this pen is the Pilot Costume 74. Three. This pen is basically the Pilot Costume 823, but with a cartridge converter. For a long time I had on Apple Boom's website, um, on my shopping cart, I had the Pilot Costume 823 to buy, but I always think that it would be I didn't buy it yet because I was always thinking it would be great if it was a cartridge pen instead of a vacuum filler. But then I found this one existed and it is the same size, the same style, but it is a cartridge converter pen. So this was the pen that I was looking for and I didn't know it existed. It has a really fine nib, which is usual with Japanese fine nibs. It is a gold nib. Uh, number 15. So this pen is really, really nice. Just for comparison, I don't have the 823, but I may ask Apple Boom one as a loan for a review, just for comparison. This pen, I bought it because I used this one and I found it was amazing. The Pilot Costume 74 with a number 5 nib, also a gold nib. It is the same pen, but with uh, different dimensions. As you can see, the length is the same or almost the same, but the girth is different and the nib size is different. This one is a number 5 nib, this one is a number 15 nib. And this nib is great, but it's very different from the nib with this uh, pilot. This one is a medium nib. I decided to go for a fine nib and I have to say that I was no longer used to pilot fine nibs and I thought it was a little too fine so you need to find the right ink for it and it's it's a different thing the this nib is much softer than this one and 
that's something that you will see uh, when I'll make the review. This one is the it's another pen that I think it's comparable. It is the Sailor 1911 large and it has this 21 karat gold nib. Let me just uncap them all for you to see how they look like. And they look like this. This is the Pilot Costume 74, the Pilot Costume 743 and the Sailor 1911 large. So let me show you next to you the nib sizes and shapes because this is always a fun part of these videos in my opinion. So really interesting pen. It is bigger than the Sailor. It has a slightly different shape. So because this pen is mine I will keep it for a long time I guess. It's really a great pen. I think I will have the time to make lots of videos and comparisons with similar pens and I guess I'm needing some other pens in my collection to make this complete. But that will be something that will come soon in a video of my wish list for 2022. Right now these were the last pens, last five pens that I received during 2021. I had one that was caught in the, in the costumes and was sent back to the United States and now I have to arrange the way to get it back again here, but it was still a purchase from last year. And I also have another pen that I bought in advance from Enso um, from the United States and it will come, it will be made only uh, in 2022 so it will be here someday and I will show it also. So I don't have any more pens than those on the mail right now. These are my last pens from 2021 which was a great pen year, not that much a good year in general stuff. So I hope you enjoyed this video, I hope you like the pens, the pens with which I compare them. I will leave links below in the description so you can check uh, reviews or sites where you can buy them. I don't have reviews for these pens yet of course but I may have reviews for some of the others like this one for example so you can check it and enjoy. So have a nice weekend and bye!